Okay, let's begin our Zoom conference with West Virginia head basketball coach Josh Eiler. Coach, we'll start with an opening comment from you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I uh, just wanted to uh, recap. It's been uh, it's been a great week to to get our legs under us and and work on us as a team. And and it's nice to have this uh, week off and then the Big Twelve scheduling uh, to to be able to do those things. So this week, uh, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, we we're off. Took uh, two two straight days off, and and hopefully that's uh, good for recovery in our legs. And and uh, it certainly showed, you know, when we came in on on Tuesday and and had a full practice, and uh, really got after it. And and uh, you know we had a little bit more pep in our step, and and uh, seemed like we were really rejuvenated and locked in. And and uh, yesterday was kind of a three quarter practice. Today will be a full practice again, and and tomorrow we'll we'll go uh, lighter before we travel out and play early, you know, on Saturday. So looking forward to uh, you know you know taking on Longhorns again, and and uh, I know it's going to be a challenge, and and they'll be uh, ready for us uh, for for sure. So looking forward to it. Thank you, Coach. Our first question today comes from Greg Hunter. So, Jeff, start with a couple of them. Uh, first of all, uh, any update on a cook? You know, he's 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 uh, he's been full go um, ever since uh, you know Saturday. So, uh, starting on Tuesday, you know, we had no issues. So he was uh, with us in practice, and and so we're we're in a good spot with him right now. Okay. Then, secondly, um, you know, two game road trip. Uh, obviously, your first as a head coach, but you've been a part of many of these positives and negatives of of you know one trip for two games um you know going out and playing obviously quick turnaround for you guys between saturday and monday yeah i think it's uh it's critical for us as, as a program to to knock out some of these uh you know if you can get two two game trips a year and, and uh you can eliminate some of the back and forth and uh, especially if it's saturday monday sometimes when it's saturday tuesday uh, the time uh, can drag on, you know, being in a hotel all that time. So you got to look for other opportunities to to get out of the hotel and, and do some other things. And, and we'll certainly even do that on a short trip, uh, you know, this weekend. So, um, yeah, it's, it's beneficial for especially us being an outlier in the league, you know, in terms of geographically to to knock out two trips and, and uh, certainly, you know, go four hours down the road or three and a half hours down the road to uh, your next destination, get settled in and, and practice at uh, that home arena on Sunday and, and uh, you know, and play on Monday. So, uh, you know, it kind of takes out some of the jet lag in the process. And I think uh, certainly, you know, on the road in these situations, you have a heck of a lot better chance, you know, uh, when, when you're settled in and, and you're not, you know, rushing to travel out somewhere and, and turn around and play real quick. Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you, Justin? Good. Um, hey, I'm just kind of wondering, uh, you know, you guys are 20-some games into the season now. And for you, I mean, you've been around coaching at different levels for most of your life, you know, pretty much. Uh, but to be this first-time head coach now, what, um, you know, what will you take with you? What have you learned? Uh, you know, what has surprised you? Uh, you know, has, has you know, being the the head coach, has it been everything you know you, you thought it would 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 be at this point? Uh, you know, this is your first time going through it. Well, every day for me, it becomes more rewarding, uh, and it slows down a little bit. Um, you know, the, this time of year, yeah, we're in the middle of conference play, uh, but uh, everything's you know the waves, the huge waves, have started to settle. Uh, you know, early in the process, I mean, it felt like you're getting hit with a huge wave after a huge wave. And, 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 you know, we're all, we were all new to this. I was new to being a head coach. Uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, four guys are basically new to being assistant coaches. So we were building that chemistry between our staff and, and, and meanwhile, trying to, you know, navigate all the challenges that we were navigating. So, uh, yeah, the, the waves have started to uh, calm a bit, and and now we're trying to – we're settling into the position. And it's just so happened that, you know, all this – all these things happen so fast, and, and we were all trying to manage this, you know, you know, you know high-stress situation 
early in, you know, in our careers, one me and being a head coach for the first time, then being an assistant coaches for the first time. So, you know, I'd say, you know, more than anything, you know, it's starting to calm a bit. We're trying, we're starting to settle into our positions. And, and I think, uh, you know, certainly, you know, it, we wish it would have, you know, played out a little differently from the jump and, and had our whole roster, but that's not the, it wasn't the case. So, you know, we've made the most of it and now we're trying to make the most of the, the last, uh, you know, nine, 10 games of uh, where we're at with the season and, and really, you know, make some waves from our standpoint uh, moving, moving forward. Because of all the things that you guys have had to navigate the roster management and injuries and, you know, this guy's eligible, this guy's not, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Have you been able to grow your, well, let me ask it this way. Have you been able to focus on your coaching as much as, you know, say a a coach that hasn't had to navigate that kind of stuff? Well, I've had to, you know, you know, many times I've had to train or change my train of thought in terms of my coaching approach uh, based on our situation. So uh, we didn't certainly get into a groove like every other team that, you know, probably had their roster set, you know, in, in May, took their team on a on a foreign tour and everything else, and, and they kind of settled into a groove early. You know, we, we didn't have that opportunity by any means. So um, now we're trying to, you know, at the end of the season, settle into our groove and, and get everything, you know, you know, to a, to a, to a point where it's a well-oiled machine, and we're competing night in, night out, in the, in the hardest conference in the country. So it, it certainly has been a challenge. I'm not not saying that whatsoever, and, but uh, I tell you what, it's been a, it's been a great growth opportunity for each and every one of us in this program. And then just you know, knowing, kind of looking for your opinion on this, I kind of think I know, know what it is, but you know, knowing what you know now, if you could go back to July. Would would you have still, you know, taken this position? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I remember telling Joe Mazzula, telling me how how difficult the situation is, and he said, "But understand, you're playing with house money. I mean, you're you're you get an opportunity to be a head coach. Uh, so, um, you know, you, that's the way you got to look at it. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a complete challenge in, in every sense of the word, but." Uh, that's that's where people and individuals, uh, you know, come out with you know more growth. You know, I didn't I didn't take over a program with a a set roster ten games in the season with, you know, that was top ten in the country. I, you know, we were piecing things together late in the summer and and doing everything we could to to make sure, you know, we put ourselves in a, a position of to be be competitive. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Great carry. Yeah, Josh, the first time you played Texas, you held your own on the glass. Obviously, you didn't have Jesse in that game. So how do you duplicate that? And is there anything else from that first meeting that you try to, you know, take away and, and build off of before the second matchup? Well, we certainly have to be way better offensively. You know, I you know, look back to the game, uh, watched it two or three times since. And, and uh, one of the big things that stands out to me is how, you know, poor we were offensively. You know, we – we changed some things dif- defensively going into that game, and and our game plan was pretty solid, and and we executed that fairly well, and we rebounded the ball well, uh, but our offense uh, was very stagnant. We took bad shots. I think we almost had nine turnovers in the first eleven minutes of that game. So uh, there was a lot to be said with uh, how we play offensively against Texas, and that's something we certainly have to shore up uh, going into the game to to. Be uh, uh, put us uh, put ourselves in a position to win on Saturday. So uh, there's different things we're doing defensively, especially adjusting the lineup, and and hopefully that that certainly helps us in the rebounding end of things. But uh, I mean, I think back. I mean, Noah Farrakhan, I think he had seven rebounds. I need that type of effort from all of our guards and everybody on the floor, uh, regardless of whether Jesse's on the floor or not. I mean, they can't look at Jesse as being the end all be all on the rebounding. Uh, end of things so uh yeah we get there's certainly things we can take away from that game but uh they are playing a little differently we're playing a little differently um uh, the one standout that i see uh, that they've changed since we've played them uh has been kendall weaver he's been playing at such a high level and, and he just makes so many plays uh with his uh tenacity and his his uh 
you know, will to compete each and every possession. So they've inserted him in the starting lineup and, and he's really making them go right now. Our next question goes to Bob Herzl. Yeah, Josh, I don't know if you saw last night that uh, uh, Kelvin Sampson got uh, ejected with his team up 20 points and and went off off about the referees. And uh, uh, on the air, Fran Fritchella made a, made a couple of statements. And the main thing he said was that, that the last two weeks, the conference has gotten way too physical, that the officials have let them get away with it. That uncalled illegal screens, box, boxed out tackles, and undercutting log catches We'll get someone hurt soon. Uh, he says it's a it's perverse of, uh, perver pervasive uh, and league wide. Do you see that? Do you see the uh, problem there that they're letting the play get a little too rough? Well, I mean, the Big 12 has been a physical league. Uh, you know, certainly I've argued over the course of uh, my tenure here that, uh, you know, I, I've argued a lot of freedom of movement um, and, and the, especially the way we play. But uh, they got a hard job. The referees really do have a hard job with how competitive this league is and how physical this league is. Uh, so I respect what they do, uh, night in, night out. They're not, they're human. They're going to, they're, they're not going to be perfect by any means. Uh, but I'm sh certainly not going to get into a position where, you know, I'm, I'm backed in the corner and making a comment about a officiating when I got, you know, I, I don't need a $25,000 fine when I got three, three <laughs> kids that put through uh, college yet. So, um, but I respect what they do. It's a, it's a very hard job and, and certainly, especially in, in this league with how competitive and, and how physical it is. So uh, sometimes emotions can get the best of us when, when we're trying to compete like that. Is there a sweet spot there of physicality for a league? I mean, uh, you know, that, that, that should be allowed and shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, I mean, I've thought, thought a lot about this in terms of, you know, the physicality of the league and even going back to the Big East days when uh, that was as physical a league as any country or any conference in the country at that point. And, and sometimes when you're allowed to play that physical, uh, you know, night in, night out, and, and then when you get to the NCAA tournament and you see different crews and, and different officiating, um, sometimes it can it, to be to your league's detriment uh, because they do start calling it uh, differently. You know, when, when you hit the NCAA tournament, you see a bunch of different crews out there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you fix that other than having, you know, the, you know, not having, you know, differences and in, in officiating from conference to conference and, and probably having and one uh, leadership that oversees everything NCAA wide. Thanks. We'll go back to Greg Hunter. Josh, a couple things again. Let's start with you've now had your complete roster for a couple weeks in practice and obviously a few games now. So have you seen some improvement in the cohesiveness, the chemistry? How, how has that manifested itself? Yeah, some days it, it looks really good. And other days, you know, you kind of digress a bit. So, um, you know, it's, it's it's two steps forward, one step back. And, and you know, I, I talked to these guys about the, the 11 game season. You know, we, uh, Jesse's you know, after that Oklahoma State game, which he was touch and go during that game, but uh, he certainly, you know, before the Cincinnati, we knew he was full go, and, and we looked at the, the season as an 11-game season. So here we are one and one um, but uh, understanding full well that we have a lot of potential uh, still within us, and we got to maximize that potential on the way out. And uh, certainly not where we want to be record-wise by any means, uh, but uh, we're going to give everything we got every single day and try to improve every single day. And that's got to be the mindset. And I continue to tell them every day, you got to, this is a lifelong, lifelong journey. You know, this is a small uh, microcosm in your life, but you got to take every opportunity and make the most of it. And there's no different in, in this scenario to where we're trying to uh, strive for growth each and every day uh, to, to get better as a team and, and improve as a team and really uh, make the most of where we're at right now. Second part of that then is sort of different tack though, two game uh, swing again. Uh, so how do you handle the scout with that? Do you, do you feed any information on TCU to the players? Coaches just keep that in, in, internally until you get to Sunday. How, how do you handle the two, two game scout? Yeah, you got to look at it one game at a time. Uh, TCU is not looking forward to us. You know, they're, they're, they're focused on Iowa state you know, this Saturday in Ames. So uh, they're in the same boat as we are. We got to focus on Texas. 
it, uh, once that game's over, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have all day Sunday to kind of turn the page and, and you can do a lot this time of year, just, uh, based on, on, on film breakdown and, and teaching, you know, in the film room. So, uh, that Sunday, you're not looking at doing much by any means on the floor, you know, after playing a, a competitive big 12 game on Saturday and the turnaround playing on Monday. So there's not a whole lot you can do, uh, in that turnaround, but you can, uh, spend a lot of time in the film and, and, and going over your game plan in the film room. Justin Jackson. Coach, kind of a, a two-part thing here. Uh, going on the road again, what, 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 what is it, uh, anything that you've been able to single out that um, has kept you guys from playing as well on the road, you know, as, as you guys have at home? I don't know that I've found anything to single out by any means. Uh, it's, it certainly gets a lot harder I mean, this this league's as hard as anywhere in the country uh, to to win on the road, and I think it's especially hard this year if you're looking at statistics. Um, so it's not just us. I mean, I think people struggle on the road in this conference in general. But uh, you know, if you can control uh, your travel and, and, and do a good job with that and, and be efficient with that, you, you certainly have an advantage. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, you, you try to pinpoint certain things that uh, you can improve and. And uh, make sure your team's ready to play. You know, we certainly, you know, going and looking back at the Houston game, which we were talking about as a staff today. You know, we weren't we weren't ready to play. Uh, they they we we ran into a bus saw with our defense, and we had no uh, we had no um, pep in our step whatsoever, and that's an early tip. So, you know, we look at different ways to to do our schedule and make sure we're we're ready to compete. You know, so. Uh, but but it is it's a it's a difficult challenge in this in this league to try to figure out how to you know get a win on the road and and I think we're the the one team that you know in our conference that hasn't left uh, our arena and, and got a road or a road win or a neutral win so all of our wins have come at home and and we got to figure that out and then the other part is and you know people from the outside look at it and say well you know maybe you should try this or try something different or superstitious angles or whatever. Um, there's really not, I mean, from a, from a coaching, you know, standpoint, I mean, there's really not much you can do differently, right? I mean, you're in the hotel, you do the walkthrough and you, and you play the game and that doesn't really change, you know, no matter what, you know, road venue you go to. Right. I mean, I mean, each situation is different. You know, my, my idea was to, to travel out to these arenas and, and, uh, and before and practice there in the evening prior to, to, whether you have a shoot around or not have a shoot around the next day, uh, depending on the, on the game time. So each situation is different. Uh, in this situation that the arena is being used the night before. So we can't get in there to, to practice tomorrow night. So we will practice here before we leave. And it is an early tip. So uh, we're going trying to figure out uh, whether we, you know, we take our allotted time uh, early, early time for, for shoot around or not. So, uh, you know, we go back and forth and, and it'll probably have a lot to do uh, with with how we practice the next couple of days in terms of whether we do that shoot around or not. And, but, um, you know, there's a lot of different trains of thought and, and you know, we, nothing's worked thus, thus far. So we'll keep on trying to manipulate that to figure out what's uh, what's the sweet spot. Thank you, Coach. We'll go back to Greg Hunter. All right, Josh, completely off topic now. Uh, do you schedule time for the team to, to get together and watch the Super Bowl? How do you guys handle Sunday? You, you said you get away to do a few things. Uh, do you practice in, in the evening? Are you going to watch the Super Bowl? What do you well, do? I mean, like I said, I mean, they don't – you don't get a lot of options on the road. You kind of take what you're given. Um, so I believe our – if on, on Sunday the, the practice is going to be or our time in, in the arena – uh, and, and Fort Worth is going to be in late morning, so we got to take advantage of that time. Uh, it's not it's earlier than I'd, I would you know prefer it to be, but it is what it is. So you take what they give you, and uh, but yeah, we'll we'll get together and, and we we'll got some ideas to get the team together in the afternoon and, and spend some time together and do some um, some things that we can get them out of the hotel, and not just you know sitting around and and uh, laying in a hotel bed, which uh, can be counterproductive in a lot of ways so yeah we're, we're planning some things to to get together and, and enjoy each other's company for sure 
Kansas guy? Are you a Kansas City fan? Did you grow up that way? Which way do you lean? Yeah, I've been a Kansas City Chiefs fan my whole life. So it's uh it's nice, you know, you kinda I didn't think this year would be the year they made the Super Bowl by any means and they weren't playing their best football. But uh, you know, you know, my son and I are, you know, that's one of our bonding experiences sitting down and watching the Chiefs. So it's it's gonna be nice to to sit down and enjoy that uh, uh with my family, which uh, looks like they're gonna go with us. So that's that's gonna be uh you know it's uh Exciting to have the Chiefs back in, and I think we're sitting in the middle of a dynasty. Any other further questions for Coach Eilert? Please use the raised hand feature. Okay, Coach, I think that's all we'll have for today. Thank you for your time. Very good. Thank you all.